Hi, I now start a long series of videos in which we are going to prove the Doma of Laplace central limit theorem on binary or random variables. The first step of that is stating and a little bit motivating Stirling's uh, formula for approximating factorials. This is very useful on its own. In the next video, I'm going to show you the proof, except that we are not going to yet prove that the constant that appears there is actually pi. That's coming later. Stirling's formula is a statement about n factorial. It says that n factorial is approximately equal to n to the n over e to the n times square root of 2 pi n. Okay, that's not a precise mathematical statement. To be precise, the precise statement is that for every n at least, at least 1, we have that the ratio of these two, so if I divide n factorial by my approximation formula, namely n to the n and e to the n, and multiply by 2 pi n under the square root, then this is always larger than 1, but not by much. Namely, I have an upper bound of 1 over 12 n on the right hand side. Now this is clearly close to 1 as n gets very large. If n is very large, then 1 over 12 n gets uh, very small. e to the small number is very small, very close to 1. In fact, it's probably worth mentioning that this is 1 plus 1 over 12 n plus little o of 1 over n, so something smaller than 1 over n. Okay, so this little o notation means, so here comes something, this means that this is something, and if I divide that by 1 over n, it still goes to 0, as n goes to infinity. So it's as small, it's smaller than 1 over n, okay? For example, 1 over n squared. Okay, so that's uh, Stirling's formula, and in this video what I want to do is just motivate why this formula should hold. I'm not going to prove it yet, but I, I want to motivate it. Uh, one thing that one thing that I have to um, I have to add here is that this constant pi will not be clear yet. Okay, so any argument I'm going to do with this proof, the value of pi, the value of this constant will not be clear yet will not yet be clear. Okay? What we are going to prove later on, and what I'm starting to motivate now, is that there is a constant here with which this uh, uh, approximation works. I'm not going to show you yet that this constant is pi. We are going to do this later on when we have the Doma of Laplace central limit theorem. Then a consequence of that one, a consequence of the probabilistic statement will be that this constant is actually pi itself. Okay, so for now I want to show you a motivation before we turn to the proof in the next video. And the motivation is to look at log of n factorial. What is log of n factorial? Well, n factorial is the product of numbers, integers, from 1 to n. And the product under the log becomes a sum outside the log. So this is going to be the sum of the logs from 1 to n. Okay? And I want to show you in this video, I want to explain to you in this video why something like n to the n over e to the n square root of some constant times root n, why something like that is plausible to do an approximation or why some, how the proof will actually start. And to do that, I'm going to draw a graph of log of x. Here is 1, here is 2, here is 3, 4, 5, and so on. And I'm going to call this n. And the log of x is something like this. Okay, so this is log of x. And what I want to do in this video uh, is, is just to show you some some neat things with with this log. Okay, so I'm going to 
take this other color which other color should I take let's do let's do yellow so I'm going to draw a column between 1 and 2 at height log of 2 so I have height log of 2 here and the column that touches the log function on the upper right corner and I'm gonna do the same here I'm going to draw the column here at height log of 3 that exactly touches the graph of the log function at number 3 and then log of 4 and so on and so on so I have all these columns that touch on the upper right edge upper right corner Okay, so this is height uh, log of 5, this is height log of n. And if you look carefully, then what you find is that the sum of the logs from 1 through n is exactly the area under the curve. So the sum of the logs is exactly, here is log 1, which is 0, and the area under these columns is exactly is exactly 1 times log 1 plus 1 times log 2 plus 3 1 times log 3 1 times log 4 and so on 1 times log n so this exactly is the area under the columns I just drew and this area is clearly larger than or equal to the integral of the of the curve from uh, 1 to, well, from 0, I can actually do it from 0, let's do it from 0, I mean, it never really reaches 0, but if I look at all of this area, this is a negative contribution, and then here my area is clearly smaller up to n, it's clearly smaller than the yellow columns, the area under the yellow columns. So if I do an integral from 0 to n, of the log function then I get a lower bound for my log of n factorial okay now I'm going to repeat something very uh, similar to do an upper bound as well and this is going to go like this so let's draw a similar picture the picture will be somewhat similar but not exactly the same of course the picture for the upper bound is the following I start drawing the graph of the log function again here is my log function so this is log of x okay or I think I put it here before and this time what I want to do is draw this a little bit further and this time I want to add columns on the right of the graph so I'm going to add a column here of which the upper left corner is touching my graph and then I want to keep doing that so I'm adding columns so that the upper left corner is touching the graph and I actually go one more step so I end up at n plus 1 with these with these columns okay so this is n plus 1 okay and um, if I do that then this height is log of 1 which is 0 this height is log of 2, this is log of 3, this is log of 4, and so on, and so on. This one is log of n, on the right of n. And if I, if I look at the columns here, the area of the columns is yet again the sum of the logs from 1 through n. So if I start writing again that I have log of n factorial as the sum of 
log of k's. This is again the area under my new columns here. This is again the area in yellow of the new columns. However, clearly this is now smaller than or equal. This area is smaller than or equal than the area from 1 to n plus 1 of all of the log function, under the log function, up to, up to this point here. So this is smaller than or equal because, okay, it's clearly always under the log function. Then if I integrate the log function from 1 to n plus 1 dx, so that's an upper bound. Okay, and so what I want to do now is actually compute the integral. So I have a, a lower bound, I have an upper bound, and I want to compute both. So let's start with the lower bound. Um, if I integrate from 0 to n log of x dx, that was my lower bound up here, that gives me x log x minus x at x equals to n minus at 0, that's n log n minus n. At x equals to 0, ah, you don't say now, but sorry. So if, you, if I integrate from 0 to n log x, which was my uh, lower bound up here, then this gives me x log x minus x from 0 to n, and at n this is going to be n log n minus n, at 0 is 0. Uh, log of 0 goes off to infinity, but x is stronger than that, so there is no, no problem with taking the limit. And that is going to be a lower bound on log of n factorial, and the upper bound is something similar, so I'm integrating uh, log of x from 1 to n plus 1, which is n plus 1 log n plus 1 minus n plus 1 and from that I have to subtract um, from that I have to subtract 1 log of 1 minus 1 and in total I have n plus 1 log n plus 1 and this is 0 because log of 1 is 0 um, and then I have a, oops, this is a minus minus, so this is going to be a plus. I should have had a, a parenthesis here, so that's a plus. And that we cancel out this m here, this plus 1 here, so minus 1 plus 1 we cancel out, and I have a minus n, and that's an upper bound on my log n factorial. Okay, and this is true for every n, so for every n, log n factorial is between n log n minus n and n plus 1 log n plus 1 minus n. Now what, are, what we're going to do is we're going to pick something in between these two. So we're going to pick dn equals to log... Okay, so well, let, let me just write this out and then explain. So I'm going to look at the difference between log n factorial and n plus 1 half log n minus n and so what we picked is what we picked is this term here that's what we picked and so what is this well this is clearly larger than n log n minus n because of this n plus one half but it's also smaller than n plus one log n plus one minus n because it's only one half here and it's only n there so this thing is clearly between um, this bound and that bound okay so that's kind of a motivation for the starting point of the proof okay it's not proved anything yet i just motivated a peak for the approximation of log of n factorial and we are going to look at this difference here dn between the log of n factorial and our peak, which is n plus one half log n minus n, this would have come out of the blue if you if you wouldn't see if you wouldn't have seen the all these uh, all these graphs, and so this video's purpose was to motivate that formula here by using these yellow graphs and showing that this is something in between an upper and a lower bound for log n factorial.